uh, welcome everybody. So I finally put together my uh, Big Hero tutorial. Um, to get right to the point, it's basically veterancy attributes, um, getting a basic hero running, as you can see here, um, making two hero abilities with that rank up twice, um, spirit bolt and energy defense, which I'll explain in a second, and um, and lastly the item shop here, uh, loot and weapons and inventory. And a lot of it has been covered by me before in my previous hero tutorial, but uh, as I'm sure you're well aware, uh, the data editor has changed in some ways since since the beta, so uh, my tutorial was kind of out of date, so this is kind of an update, and I went deeper into the abilities, which I think will be a pretty, uh, pretty hefty part. Um, but um, this is the exact map that you'll be getting uh, if you download the map separately. Um, basically I have a hero here, this guy, except I turn him into an actual hero. He's from the campaign. Um, he has two stats, strength which increases damage, um, and intelligence which increases your health and energy. And under abilities here you can see I have Spirit Bolt which sends a, it's just like a fireball sort of spell, just deals damage in a missile. And this energy defense is kind of cooler. It, uh, when it's, it's a passive ability that when you turn it on, um, you'll get health when you're attacked, you'll get health back but uh, it does cost a bit of energy whenever you do get striked, um, struck, I mean. So, um, and you can see I don't have a weapon right now, but in my inventory I have my weapon slot and my general bag. And if I pick up the short staff here, I do get my weapon, which is actually just his default weapon, which I took off and made it only accessible through this item. And the other thing is the uh, loot here is just an example. And uh, you can see the shop. I'm, I'm in range, so I can see the purchase short staff. And um, if you see my, like, um, my guy here, he has no weapon, but if I buy one right here, um, you can get rid of this, by the way, by uh, going into the alert for the, uh, for the shop ability, um, which you'll learn about later. Um, you can see that the weapon's here now, I have it here, and you can pick up the Zergling Blood and this weapon, and they both go in here because they're not being used. And if I drop this, I can move this in here, etc. And I can sell the Zergling Blood and I'll get my money, one one mineral back. And now if I, oh, I better have my weapon. Um, if I get Spirit Bolt, uh, you, well, you can see I have a weapon first of all. And uh, if I use Spirit Bolt, it has a little cast time and just annihilated that Zergling. Uh, as far as loot goes, you can see Zergling Blood is dropping. And um, the way the tutorial works is that it should drop 50% of the time. Um, and I think it does. And let's see, spear bolt. I'm gonna spear bolt this guy. Oh, you just saw that pink bolt go by. And I just leveled, and my intelligence strength went up, which increased my damage and my health from three, three, three fifty. More zergling blood, and you can take it back and sell it. Uh, oops. Let's sell some. And on top of that, I can learn energy defense now. When I turn it on, we have two buttons here. You can see it's on, and um, I get health back when they attack, but my energy goes down a bit and uh, you can't really tell the health is coming back because um, but you know because Zerglings do five damage and I've only taken four damage from each one if you see if you see the numbers going down I can pick up all the Zergling blood and that's basically it um, you got a hero you got loot you got shop you got levelable abilities and each ability requires every second level and I only did two ranks of each one just to demo but uh, you could obviously expand that um, so, hope this tutorial is enjoyed, and, um, well, get ready, because it's a long one, so, uh, good luck. Okay, so to start this tutorial, let's, uh, make a new map, and, um, we're just going to be starting out here and adding the standard campaign stuff, so we have all that to work with. Um, it's always good to add that, and you can always add it later by going into file dependencies and, um, and setting them up. And let me just make this new document here, and then we'll get right ahead and make our hero. And um, we're just going to start by placing some units first, so we have everything on the map. And then we're going to go straight into the data editor. Um, I don't think this tutorial will have much trigger editing at all, in fact, uh, maybe none. So it's going to be mostly data, and it's kind of good to keep in data when you're doing uh, unit and hero stuff, because it's probably more efficient than trying to make triggers to do stuff, but sometimes you have to bite the bullet and make a trigger um, for like Hero Revive for instance. Um, anyways, this one 
small map took is taking like 40 seconds just to make. Okay. Anyways, um, oops. As you can see here, I have Zergling already uh, searched up in my units layer. Make sure on the units layer, um, and make sure on player 15 hostile. And let's just play some Zerglings. Um, these are just going to be our guys to test that our guys getting that our heroes getting experience and whatnot. Um, so that that should be enough to test out a good amount of levels, and then search for K-A-R. Oh, campaign adds a lot of slowness. There we go. Uh, okay, and switch to player one and drop a caress somewhere above the Zerglings. And we're pretty much done in the map here, so now we can go straight into the data editor. So first off, uh, great, I can't even select the map here. Um, I have to do it this way. Okay, so go to the units layer of the units tab of the data editor and um, search for Caress. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Just like I pronounced Zelot, Zelot, and all that stuff wrong. Anyways, um, let's see. So I got this guy. So let's remove his whatever default abilities he has outside of attack and move. And let's clear them off the command card too. Got to just do all this basic setup stuff. Um, I recommend when you make your own hero that you duplicate and kind of do it from scratch, but because this is a tutorial and I'm constrained by time and whatnot, so it's better for me just to start with this guy and go from there. I'm going to leave his weapon on, but when I do get to the items part of this tutorial, um, we're going to remove his weapon completely and then just make the item carry a weapon that will only make his weapon active when he has that item. Um, but for now, we need to see that he's leveling, so I'm going to leave that on. And I'm going to leave most of this. I'm going to increase his life to be 300, just just so we don't die while we're testing. Um, like I said, this tutorial will not have uh, revive, so... Um, well, this hero actually doesn't have any revive, I don't think. Not even blizzards, no. So, um, yeah, we want to increase his health so we don't die. So anyways, back to, back to the unit here. On unit attributes, we're going to check off her heroic. And under unit flags, he already has the hero thing checked. So make sure you do that if you didn't duplicate a hero, which I would recommend that you do duplicate a hero and then just change the model to whatever you want or change the actor model or whatever. So we got this now, and now let's go to behavior. So um, we're going to be doing two attributes to keep it simple, but you can expand it to be whatever you want. So in the behaviors tab, right click add object, and we're going to name this strength and click suggest, and this is of type attribute, press OK. And what this is going to do is um, max points. Hold on, just make this 2,000, just so there's no uh, no problem running into that max. Um, so under UI tooltip, double click. And so what this tool, uh, what this uh, attribute is going to do, is increase damage, increase damage for the hero. And by damage, I imply that it's going to increase your melee, ranged, spell, or splash damage, all four types. Um, and the player can figure that out on them or themselves, or you could write it here, increases all damage dealt by the hero and the hero's spells. You could say it like that too, because it actually will affect the spells too. Okay, and then now we actually have to do the main part, which is the behavior-modification plus and under combat let's change damage dealt unscaled for all four categories to be uh, two so you'll get two damage bonus whenever this attribute levels up to all areas and let's copy paste the strength attribute and now let's call this intelligence and because I'm doing this sort of simply um, intelligence is going to increase your health and energy so double click on the tooltip increases the hero's health and energy. Okay, and uh, under modification now, we've got to remove the combat stuff that we just put in for strength. Set them all to zero. Okay, good, and then go to the unit tab of the modification thing here, and scroll all the way down to you see vital max bonus and energy, let's say increases our hero's energy by 50 and life by 50. And I left the shields on the hero. Uh, I didn't take them off because he is a Protoss guy. So, um, but you might want to do that because shields kind of get in the way of a lot of things in your RPG. It might 
be unbalanced or something. So um, we have those two now. So now let's do the veterancy. Um, this is what's actually going to control the leveling, and it's going to take advantage of these two strength and intelligence things, which it's going to level up as you level. Um, I'm not going to be showing like a Diablo system where you choose your stats. That's a little bit more complex. It's doable um, because you can you can display a dialogue and um, increase uh, a stat count of a behavior for a hero. So you could do it through dialogues and do a sort of Diablo stat choice thing, but I'm not going to be doing that because it is way more time consuming. So uh, back to the objective here. Um, let's call this caress levels and click suggest and change the behavior type to veterancy and press OK. And with strength actually let's put an editor prefix of caress space dash enter and do that for intelligence too so we can search later and uh, not have trouble finding it because um, for some reason when you make a new map you can't Usually you could, there's one more level here where you can select uh, whatever map you're working on, but uh, it seems to only work if you close the editor and come back. Um, I don't know if that's a bug or if that's just the way it's supposed to work. Um, and now let me actually save this. Uh, new hero tutorial. Okay. It's going, it's going, okay. So then let's go back to our veterancy ability uh, behavior, which we just made. Um, so experience fraction, it's going to be 100% for kills, which is exactly what we want. Um, name is fine. Share filters, you might want to check off ally here. And you might want to make heroic required. Oops. Qu oops. Required and do that for all of these. Um, but since we're only giving experience for kills, you'll need to really change kills here. Uh, flags, you don't want to change anything. Shared fraction, well, let's say we'll give 0.5 to all the allies around. And shared radius, let's say 8. And notice that I am clicking on the kills when I set that. Um, no tooltip, no icon. Now the veterancy levels plus. Um, so right off the bat, we'll add a value here at the top. Minimum experience is going to be 0. Um, because your hero actually starts at level 0. So this thing right here will make him automatically level to level 1 because it requires zero experience. Um, and that's just something I learned through having made it before. Uh, you don't have to do that. You could start your heroes at level zero, but I think level one makes more sense. So for this uh, index we made here, you click on the behavior but tab button here. And instead of you know manually punching in damage that's going to increase every level and movement speed that's going to increase every level, all we're going to do is increase his attributes which we just made which is um, caress intelligence and caress strength so um, and increase that to one increase that to one um, so what is what's it actually going to do is just increase these and let's copy paste this index say it requires 25 experience to get to uh, this level two um, by the way index zero is level one index one is level two and this can stay the same and basically when you hit when you get level one which will happen automatically because it requires zero experience it's going to give you one point of both of these and then when you hit level two it's going to give you one point of both of these and that's automatically going to increase your health and and energy and this one's automatically going to increase your damage so we don't have to do any of that or worry about it it's all controlled through your attributes and let's copy let, let's do five levels so uh, this one's going to require 35 this one's going to require 45 and level 5 is going to require 55 experience. And they do, it is cumulative. So if it require it is not cumulative is what I meant to say. So if you get 25 experience to level 2, then you have to get 35 after that. So at this point, you'll have like whatever, 70 or 80 total, ex I mean, uh, 50 to 60 total experience that you'll have uh, gained. Uh, so in the old days of Warcraft 3, and even in the beginning of the StarCraft 2 beta, um, this number was actually cumulative, so it would only be a difference of 10 to go from this level to this level, but it's actually 25 to get to this level, 35 to get to this level, 45, and I, I really appreciate Blizzard for actually changing that, because it makes a lot more sense. Um, 